come up here. Okay. Over the years, we've conducted a lot of paranormal investigations, and one thing is we we are a evidence-based team. That is quite different than a lot of other teams that are out there. We may have personal experiences while we're out on investigation, but we're not going to tell you about them unless we can prove them because we are out to get evidence in the form of video, photographic, and audio. If we can't show or let you listen to that, what we have to say is worthless because we need to prove it to you, okay? So we're after, uh, we've experienced things, we've heard things, felt things, selected evidence that we know are there, we can prove they're there, but we really can't explain them. We actually did an investigation one time here in the area for a former retired uh, minister from a, uh, uh, seminary and he was having trouble in his house okay that's a little different right and uh, he said that he believes in it because one he's experienced it but secondly he understands that there are things in this world that we can't understand we are not given all that information even though God provides us with the Bible and tries to tell us everything we need to know to live our lives there's still some things we just can't understand and that's what we believe is happening when we experience paranormal. First of all, explain to me what paranormal is. Y'all are scholars. What does the word paranormal <coughs> mean? Or what does the word para mean? Para means not, right? So if it's not paranormal, then it's, right? Normal. Not normal. Right, thank you. It's not normal. So, um, you know, we're investigating things that are not normal. Y'all have things in your house that are not normal that are not relatives. I have a wife and three daughters. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I get it. I understand that. So, uh, <laughs> one of the first things we do when we start an investigation is we always look for something that is the root cause of the issue that may not be paranormal related. A lot of times that's electrical, it could be plumbing issues, all kinds of things like that. We run a rule, roll all that out before we go anywhere else. Um, Wanted to show you a little bit. Have you all seen the shows on TV? How many have seen the shows on TV? Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, we have virtually every piece of equipment that you've ever seen that you've ever seen on TV, and we're going to kind of show you a few pieces over here and just kind of show you what they look like. Um, digital voice recorders. All of you have these on your on your cell phones. Uh, we do use our cell phones at times, but we also have ind individual recorders that we use. One reason we use recorders. Like a dog whistle, a dog can only hear that dog whistle. We can't hear it, right? We do recorders because we can get recordings of sounds and audio on recordings that we can't hear live, but when we play it back to the computer, it's there. So that's why we use the recorders. Laser grids. Um, you got one there? Yeah, got one. Um, you've seen these on TV. They project green lights everywhere, and, and you're looking for a shadow uh, that comes through those and it will kind of move through those lights. Like I've actually got a video I'm going to show you of something that we picked up at, at one of the places here in Rosary County. Digital cameras, there's all kinds. Any digital camera will work. Uh, the nice thing about digital is it's great to work with your computers. You know, we started out in the days where we had film and that was just a mess. And uh, so you can take a thousand pictures on digital and it's a piece of cake. We use night vision video cameras, uh, which I don't know if we have one out there, but uh, they're, they're a little larger than a normal camera, but they have night vision on them so that we can actually see in the dark. Uh, flashlights, of course, a thing called a REM pod. Um, you all may have seen this on TV. It usually has an antenna sticking up. You turn it on, and if this works off electromagnetic energy. And so if that energy gets close enough to it, it's going to set the lights off and some noises that go with it and let us know well, a lot of times we'll put that in another room we'll leave it setting and out of nowhere it'll go off on its own <clears throat> k2 meter probably the most popular thing you've seen on tv every every ghost hunter on tv uses one by the way we don't like the word ghost hunter i'll just let you know that <laughs> we like paranormal investigators uh, the k2 um, meter a ghost box uh, this is a common name for it Basically what it is is a small transistor radio that's been reprogrammed to work like a police scanner. And so when you turn it on, it scans all these channels and it's picking up audio that you can't hear. Uh, but when we go back through it on our, on our 
audio you can hear. Now there are times that you can actually carry on a conversation and that's very rare but it does happen and we and we've had that happen where we carry on a conversation live through the ghost box. So that's very interesting when it happens. We have thermal cameras. Uh, this is the home version that plugs into an iPad. And so when you see the flare thermal that they use on TV, this is the home version that we use. <coughs> 360 telescope looks like a spider. Uh, when you turn that on, again, works off with electromagnetic energy. Uh, we can get directional answers on that. Are you standing over here, over there? We also use a set of cards that we've developed. Um, and basically the cards just help us. Uh, for instance, we might put four cards out, one that might say uh, man, boy, girl, woman. Point to which one you are with the spider thing and it'll point, okay? We have things in here like Confederate, soldiers, are you injured? What part of your body's injured? That type of thing. So it helps lead and guide us during our investigation. The Boo Bear, I don't have. I wish I had it. It's a, a little teddy bear. Frank's seen it. But it's a little teddy bear and it's got all these sensors in it. it it'll uh, go off if it moves. It'll go off if the temperature changes in the room. It'll go off if electromagnetic energy gets close enough to it. That's a really neat piece of equipment. Another thing is Connect. I don't know if you've seen this on TV. Not too many teams use them. We're privileged to have one. But it works off of a uh, video game. And if you've seen, you remember the Wii's where you had to hold the little wand? Well, there's a new one that came out a few years ago that you don't hold anything, okay? You just walk around and it will move as you move. Those are reconfigured to use in investigations. We now have one that's portable. We walk around with it and you can actually see stick figures on the screen, but there's nobody there. And that's what you're looking for, is a stick figure coming up and doing something. And then there's a trigger object. You want to talk about trigger objects real quick? Trigger, <laughs> trigger objects are basically, like if we go somewhere and we know that, um, say it was from the in Confederate time, we know that there's something there from that time, if we take like confed old Confederate money with us, that might be a trigger to have them come. Or like Boo Bear is even usually a trigger object, especially for kids, because if there's little kids there, they'll interact with him a lot. Yeah. The trigger objects are, are pretty common. Um, any questions about the tools, real quick? Yeah. What was the K2 meter for? K2 meter also registers electromagnetic energy, and so um, a lot of electricians use a similar tool to see where the power is in the box and in the walls and things. We can actually put that on a, on a wall and find the wire in the wall as well. Uh, okay, so a little bit about investigating do's and don'ts. So we're going to educate you a little bit here, okay? Um, we always tell everybody, be careful when walking around. Why one? We're always in the dark. Why are you always in the dark? Well, I won't say we're always in the dark. 99% of the time we're in the dark. Um, the reason why is because your senses are better when you're in the dark. If you go somewhere, uh, let's say you happen to go outside, okay, it's dark outside, what happens? Your hearing gets better, your smell gets better, sometimes your taste or, or uh, uh, just feel will get better. If you're going out there in the middle of the daytime, you've got cars driving around, you've got all kinds of noises, you've got everything that's hindering you from really being able to use your senses as best as you can. What's interesting is sometimes we play a game when we're somewhere overnight where it's it's three o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black dark, but we'll blindfold ourselves anyway because just knowing that we're blindfolded makes our other senses even heighten more so that we can pick up some other things. Sit down, be still, and be quiet. Um, Again, we want everything as perfectly quiet as possible because sometimes the noises we hear, the sounds we hear, anything that we get back on our recordings, it's got to be really quiet so that we can hear some of that. And you'll, I've got some evidence to, for you all to, to hear tonight, so you'll understand why we ask uh, to be quiet while we're doing that. Um, be respectful of spirits. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you about our team is that we are a faith-based team. Every member of our team goes to a local church, Chattanooga and Murfreesboro is part of the reason we exist. We have a lot of people, believe it or not, that go to our churches and they'll call us because they don't know who else to call. 
Are they going to call their pastor and tell their pastor they have a ghost in their house? Probably not. Okay? Um, depends. <laughs> Do what? You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. But. <laughs> yeah. I, but um, we get a lot of people from our churches that, that say they don't know who to call. And we have a reputation out there for, for being a faith-based team. There are not a lot of them in the United States, but there are a group of faith-based teams across the United States. And so that makes us a little bit more unique than other people as well. Um, we always allow out light, lights out, like I said, because uh, we like everything nice and quiet and dark, so we <coughs> concentrate. We have done a couple of daytime investigations. Frank was with me on one. Um, they're a little different because so you have to really think about the sounds that are out there, the cars, you know, everything, birds, and anything chirping, and it just really messes with your audio. But we were still able to get a lot of good uh, evidence off that investigation. We tell people don't run or scream. The reason why is we are in a dark place. Normally it's in a place that we don't know real well. If it was our house, we'd know where that stool is, okay? But if it's not our house, we don't know. So we might trip over something. Um, again, we always try to debunk first, don't assume. Uh, we wanna always try to debunk, don't whisper. And that's Miss Bell, sorry. <laughs> um, the reason we don't want to whisper, again, is because you will hear some of this evidence and some of it is a whisper. And if we're whispering and they're whispering, we don't know who's whispering. And so we always say for our team, talk in normal voices because that way we can get understand the different levels. And because we are a, a faith-based team, we don't use any profanity. So unlike some of those teams you see on TV, you're not going to get that from us. Okay, we just we just don't do that. There's no no need to do it, and, and that's not who we are as a group. So, um, hey John, yes, sir. I was just going to mention um, for those of you who are interested in this field, when we say talk in a normal voice, we're we're not actually just sitting there. Just we we are actually sitting there just talking too. We come up with our own conversations in hopes to get a response because. There are times when you can actually tell a story or even just talk about the history of that place and before you know it, on your audio evidence, you'll have somebody saying, yeah, or, um, you know, I know, or say a name or something like that. So um, telling stories or, or just talking about regular things, everyday things, it brings the, the uh, activity to life. Yeah. Um, one thing I was going to just mention real quick because I was talking to my kid earlier. And Mike, can you, kind of, can you kind of tell them what you were telling me about what's going on in California right now? In California, they're a little different. We are on real estate laws. They have to disclose paranormal activity of deaths and houses. And we're about three years behind them, but it's coming. So if, if we fill out a disclosure in real estate, they actually have to disclose if they have unusual things in the house. And that's, that's going to be here. Yeah. So I can see in the future that you might have, just like a home inspector, you may have a paranormal inspector. I know, I know. <laughs> Susan, you laugh. <laughs> that house that was built over that graveyard, they could be out of it. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what they do in California yeah. now. And that, I'm looking for a new uh, new retirement job, so that might be it uh, at that time. Um, investigation location types, just to let you know, we do... Uh, We'll do an investigation anywhere anybody asks us. We've been in caves, we've been in houses, we've been in businesses, we've been outside at pig farms, all kinds of places. Um, but the same thing holds true. It's up to our client as to how much of that information gets spilled out into the general public, okay? If they want it to be top secret, I misspelled that, no? Top secret? Uh, <laughs> my, my spell checker wasn't working. Um, if they want it to be top secret, they don't want anybody to know. And believe me, I could tell you some stories about some houses in this town, but the owner said, no way. So I can't tell you anything about it. I can't even tell you where they were, but you'd be amazed. But they said, no, we don't want anybody to know about it, and so it's top secret. We don't even discuss it. Um, partial disclosure, they may say, uh, yeah, you can tell what you found here, but don't disclose our name or our address. That's fine. We don't ever disclose an address anyway. 
but they say, you know, we don't, we don't mind you telling people about what you found, but just don't tell them where you found it, okay? And then we have people that say, we don't care. Man, put it everywhere. Put it on Facebook, <coughs> wherever you want to, just put it out there and let people know because we're excited about it. Um, it is interesting. You have a couple of different types of people. You have people that are excited about what they have because it's interesting to them, and they don't really care about getting rid of it. They just want to know more about it. They want to know the history. They want to know where it came from, why it's there, so they can interact with it. Then you have other people that are so scared to death, just get it out of my house, okay? Well, that brings up a point, getting it out of the house, okay? Yeah. Um, guys, I'm standing up here telling you, nobody can do that except Jesus Christ, okay? And as a faith-based team, that's what we tell our clients. We cannot do that for them. Now, we will be more than happy to pray for them. We'll pray for their house. We'll pray for their family. But we can't get it out of their house. We help them look at their relationship to Christ and try to get them to use that faith that they have in, in their God to overcome the problem and the powers that are in their home. Okay? Yes? Is the age of the dwelling or the building... Um, more likely to have paranormal activity if it's older or the ground that it was built on? Wait, it, is that a factor? It does, doesn't seem to be a factor. We've been in, in new builds as, and we've been in 1828 homes and things. So, I mean, it really doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of it, I think, has to do with the grounds that we are in around here with being Civil War and Indian grounds and everything. Um, but, no, it doesn't seem to matter at all. Uh, it could There could be something here. We, just, we haven't investigated here, but... Um, you know, it just, it could be anywhere. Restaurants, anywhere. So, any questions about that? We'll move on. So here's some locations. I know this is small, sorry, I'll read it to you. But Rutherford County Investigation Locations. This is just some of the investigation locations we've done in Rutherford County. We have investigated Cannonsboro uh, at the request of the Parks Department. And so uh, I've got some, I think I've got some evidence from Cannonsboro in here. Uh, the Greenway, also has, at the request of the Parks Department, we've done the Greenway. Um, north of Broad, out towards the back side of, of the battleground. The Evergreen Home, how many of you all know about the Evergreen Home? Up on 231 North, uh, Sam Ridley, a uh, relative at uh, uh, Jim Dr. 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 Black? Jimmy Ridley. Jim Ridley. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. He recently passed away. He'd been in the nursing home for years, uh, but he was, it, that was a great investigation. He had a lot of fun with us up there that night. He was there. Uh, the Rutherford County Courthouse right downtown. Spent, spent a little bit of time down there. The old Rutherford County Health Department. Very interesting building. Um, Sam Davis Home, we've been up there. Uh, the old Bradley Academy. We were in that building uh, before the city took it over. The uh, some private historical locations, some almost, I won't say all, but many of the businesses up on the square we have been in. Um, and also a lot of some private cemeteries in the area that we've been in as well. Um, one thing about the square downtown, I know this, some people um, may or may not believe in this, but the tunnels. Um, there's a lot, been a lot of talk about tunnels downtown. And uh, I have been in a lot of the buildings down there that have tunnel entrances that are now cemented and closed. And I've talked to a couple of people that tell me they've been in those tunnels. So uh, just to let you know, in my opinion, there are tunnels downtown. But I know the city says that they're not there. So, okay, we're gonna switch over to some evidence review real quick. And uh, I could keep you here all night with that, but I won't. And I'll try to show you the best of the best. Um, because I want to make sure and leave some time. And the people that are sitting right there, there's a speaker, so just beware. I'll try to adjust it here. Yeah. Don't let the human think of it. This first one, um, and I, I tried to, to pre qualify these to make sure you hear them. Uh, but this first one says, take a deep breath. We were doing a, a home here in Rutherford County. Uh, the the mother called just frantic because she was getting thrown out of bed at night up against the wall. We do run into some cases of, of some uh, what you would call the more evil spirits, okay? Uh, they're more rare uh, than common, but we do run across that. 
So while we were there that night, she was in a room with some of our investigators and she began choking, very badly choking. In fact, to the point we had to go in and carry her out of the house. When she got out of the house, she had red marks on her neck, okay? We caught this audio when we went back to listen to the audio just seconds before she started coughing. up front might be able to hear it. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. So take a deep breath. But it's a whisper. Now, that, that's kind of strange when you figure what happened just seconds later with this with this lady. Um, Did you say that was here in Murfreesboro? Yes, ma'am. It sure was. Um, well, Mike, there went the value of real estate. <laughs> <laughs> There was an agent saying, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us what the wrong is with this power machine? This, this was out on 281 South in the subdivision out there. 231? I'm sorry, yeah, 231 South. South? Yeah, towards South Church. South Church. Yeah, towards Shelbyville. Uh, this next one says, Mommy, I love you. This is at a house that is at the corner of College and where the old hospital is, whatever that street is. University. university? Not university. Highland. Highland. Highland and, and uh, College Street. There's an old house there that the story goes that it used to be a farmhouse and it was moved to Murfreesboro. The lady that had us come was in her 80s and was remodeling the entire house from the ground up. We walked in the basement and we caught this and it says, Mommy, I love you. So let's see if you can hear this. <coughs> Can you hear that? There was no children there that night. One of the things that is interesting, and you'll hear this story if you go to the walks down on the square, but um, if you go stand at the corner of the uh, of the lot where the old Rutherford County Health Department is, there's a tree there. And if you'll stand under that tree, and if you will sing the song, London Bridge, sometimes you might hear children that are not with you. Falling down, falling down, falling down, London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. You hear the little children laughing? How about if we sing them? Falling down, One more time. falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. There were no children with us that night. So, um, where did they come from? You tell me. Um, let me see, we'll go back here, pick up something else. The Blue Rooster. Any of you remember the Blue Rooster? I think now it's Puckett's, right? Mm -hmm. um, they called us, they were having some issues down in their basement. We went down there. Um, they are one of the locations downtown that has a big hole in their wall in their basement that goes towards the courthouse. It's all concreted up. Uh, but when we were down there, um, they had a bunch of syrup boxes on one of those big rails setting probably 30 feet from us. And so um, you'll just hear what happened. I ask it to let us go and what that it's there. Okay, we're coming back to see it. We're here. My name's John. And uh, you're back here. We want to hear from you. Let us know that you're here. What was that? All those boxes fell over. That were on that rail. There were about 15 of them, and they landed about six feet away from the rail. Um, got you going yet? Are you ready? Um, <laughs> let's see, here's the courthouse. You like this one. Um, we were down there at the courthouse on the second floor um, at the, let's see, if you're facing this direction. <laughs> on, the, on the second floor, there's a restroom, set of restrooms up there. 
And the men's room that is up there, from what we've been told during the time of the Civil War, was an intensive care unit uh, for medical needs. And <coughs> we were up there investigating this, and you'll see in this video, uh, we had the door to the bathroom propped open, one of those big wooden wedges stuck under the door, right? And uh, all of a sudden, the door closes without any reason why. And it actually drugged that wooden wedge with it across the floor. The door's right here. So we never did figure out why that door closed, but we tried several times to get it to recreate itself, and it wouldn't. Um, we ran one of the uh, conference rooms off the side of, of the main judicial room there, and uh, my son was with me, and uh, he started complaining about his stomach hurting, and it was really quick. And um, then about 30 seconds later, he said, it's gone. It, whatever it was, it's all gone. And it was really that quick within about 30 seconds. <clears throat> well, we got two EVPs at that time. This one happened at the beginning. You hear that? Well, when you run it through the computer, it actually says, I saw hell, is what it says. And then 30 seconds later, we got the back side of it. I think you'll be able to hear this one. Read on the computer, say what you get. It's curious. 58. Anybody want to guess what it said? It said it's left. Just that quick. So we never did really figure out what was going on there, but it was very, <coughs> very interesting. Um, the Evergreen Home. Uh, I'm not going to play that because I don't know that you can hear it. Uh, but we had a clip there outside of the main house. If you've ever been up there, there's a smaller house that they say was Mr. Black's. Um, Dr. Black's mm -hmm. um, office. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we were out there and, and actually got an a EVP in there, but it's really light, and I don't think you'd be able to hear it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. The music stop. If any of you remember the music stop that was down here off the square for a while, now they're back behind the mall. Uh, that building has in the front a second level. Um, my daughter worked for, for Allen down there for several years, and she told me that the employees would never go up to the second level by themselves. If they were just scared to death, they'd never go up there. Well, the story goes is that years ago, there's a gentleman that tried to live up there. He, he ran some electricity up there, tried to live there. The city ran him out because it wasn't to codes. Um, so ever since then, they've never had anything up there. There's no power. Um, but we got up there, and um, we got this is interesting. Uh, again, there's no power. We're using some of our equipment that can be manipulated through electricity, but there's no power. And uh, so this is one that says it doesn't like the noise. Now it's next door to some what, kind of nightclub, some nightclub or something up there, and it was kind of noisy the night we were up there. So you watch for the light. You like all this noise? If you, let me correct the question, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, what it was saying. If you don't like this noise, can you make the light light up? Oh, oh. <laughs> very responsive. Yeah, so that's how we use that piece of equipment. We'll ask questions, and, and if the yes or no, we'll get it to light up the light. Uh, this was actually downstairs at the music stop. Uh, we were sitting down there in some drones uh, when they had them set up. And another investigator and I were asked, was talking to it, and you'll hear this. This will sound so distinct you think it's a third person sitting in the room, but I guarantee you there was nobody else in the room with us. 
We've had these here all night and they've hardly lit up at all. I bet you can't do it. Scared? No. But doubt it. There at the end, we said, are you scared? <coughs> doubt it. And it sounded just like another person in the room. We'll play one more time. We've had these here all night and they've hardly lit up at all. I bet you can't do it. Scared? No. Doubt it. So, got you scared yet? No, not really. Um, the Yellow Bradley Health Department. Um, this is interesting. You were talking about somebody was showing me some pictures on their phone of an orb that they had, and um, it was you, right? Um, this is a picture of an orb that we got at the Old Bradley Academy down in the schoolhouse room that was down on the first floor, and. Um, the first one, it, it's going to do th three different ones, different um, speeds, and so it'll slow it down really good for the last one. But check it, check this out. This is. Oh, it'll be good. I have a ball where you can be like. You're watching for something coming across the top of it. Yeah, that's what I Come in one more time. You'll be able to see how it changes shape just a little bit as it comes across the screen. And color. Kind of starts out with the red. Um, we never did figure out exactly what that was. Um, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes we just don't figure it out. We just don't know everything. Um, which we like to, but how many of you all know everything, right? <laughs> you know. Um, here's the Old County Health Department. Um, this is in a conference room, and if I remember right, uh, I think this is asking about a, a toy fire truck that we had with us. <laughs> oh, I know. The yoo hoo yoo hoo. Let's see if you can do this. Let's try to change the picture. Come on. It's going to come right now. Here's the yoo hoo yoo hoo. Uh, always a child. Does anybody know the stories about that? About that? Um, about the health center? Apparently, a long time ago, it used to be a children's hospital. Um, somebody who can help me out there, but that's what I've been told. Um, and there's a lot. Of, uh, the employees there tell were telling us stories about hearing children all day and all night long. If they're up there by themselves at night, they hear children uh, eat, literally screaming from pain up there. Uh, in that old building. Has anybody ever worked there? Anybody been there like that? No? Okay. Well, Dr. Dr. Talbert always tell you about it. I think we're probably waiting to get shots. I, <laughs> I can remember a long line. It was about 1947 or 48, but long lines, you know, little kids waiting to get their shots before starting the school. Yeah. And I mean, everybody is screaming before the different than today, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, this one here is, is interesting. Um, let's see. This one's kind of funny. Uh, this this is an old farmhouse here in Rutherford County that uh, we were called to. The owner was getting ready to tear it down, and uh, he'd heard a story um, that back about 40 years ago, a mother and her young child came up missing and was never found from the house. And so he invited us to come out. The house was pretty well run down. That's, that's a picture of the way it was when we got there. But um, it's interesting. Uh, we'll just listen to this. Are you responsible for the disappearing of the woman and the child? Oh, 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 you're missing out from there. Mind you, yeah. I'm going to put some voice of lights up there. I'm going to put it on the video. Mm -hmm. Are they buried down here? If you bury them down here like that, oh my goodness. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. So you saw the lights light up to the question, did you bury them down here? Okay. Uh, interesting enough, the guys that were with us that night are Rutherford County Deputy Sheriffs. And they found that very interesting, but they couldn't do anything about it at that point. But um, we also, my son had an interesting experience. You were the one that crawled over there. I did. I stepped on that. Whoa! 
my pocket. <laughs> so, the little K2 meter that we showed you over there, um, he had it in a, he had a, like a hoodie jacket on with a pocket in the front. And he said it moved by itself underneath there. We were in this basement for probably about three hours, and it's probably not any bigger than this corner of this room, along with some deputy sheriffs. And all of a sudden, this thing started moving in his pocket, and he went nuts. And he doesn't normally do that. He's usually pretty, pretty calm and collected. Um, so I want to show you a couple. Yeah. Why did you have deputy sheriffs? Uh, actually, they have a group of investigators. Um, it, it's about four guys, and. Um, I've known them almost as long as I've been doing this, and uh, we just have a lot of fun sometimes going with them because they get in places we can't because they're deputy sheriffs, you know, and so, hey, we'll tag along with anybody if we get an opportunity. Did you uh, tell the owner that had you out that they were gonna tear the house down? Yeah, yeah, we did, but he didn't really care. He just wanted to know if there was any validity to the story. He was just gonna bulldoze it down and use it for a cross. So he just didn't want the house anymore. He had actually lived in the house at one time. His wife had died in the house from an overdose. And she kept saying that somebody kept trying to pull her into the basement. There was a lady that kept telling her to go to the basement before she died. Mm -hmm. So, interesting story, right? I want to see if there's any bones down there. I <laughs> um, wanted to share this picture with you. And this, this has been a controversial picture within our team. But I wanted to show it to you just so that you kind of get a flair for it. There's a thing called the shadow person. You've heard about this on TV. Uh, basically what it is, uh, you'll see the, the shape of a person, uh, but it's dark, it's black, uh, because they just can't gather enough energy to, to become full apparitions where you can see them sometimes. Uh, and by the way, that's a, apparitions do occur, we've got some on video, but they're rare. If you watch the TV shows, it happens every week, okay? It doesn't happen like that in reality. But I wanted to share this picture with you. Uh, this was not taken in Rutherford County, but it is very interesting. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Now my pointer with me. Here we go. There, right in the ear, there is a black figure. It stands right here. Okay. And the next photo, which was just taken a few seconds later, that. Whoops. Sorry. That figure gets bigger, okay? It's right there. I'll kind of toggle back and forth between them. But you can see a little bit of a shadow starting right in here. This was this was actually taken in complete darkness by my wife, uh, who came in late, so <coughs> we had to the later. But anyway, she took these pictures and, and a lot of us believe that it is indeed a shadow figure in there because there would be no reason for there to be a person at the end of that hallway. It was pitch dark black. As far as we know, there's no other people in the building at the time. And so why in the world would there be somebody at the end of this hallway? But the flash picked up everything else, but that person stayed totally black for some reason. Um, this, is, this happened here in Rutherford County. Uh, it's a house in Brentmead subdivision. And uh, it was a Hispanic couple and uh, they have a daughter that was in witchcraft and they thought it brought some stuff to their house and actually we believe that it probably did. One of the things we do sometimes when we broadcast live from, from an event because we have uh, almost 5,000 followers on our Facebook page and so we, we do live broadcasts and I was doing a live broadcast at the time in the bedroom which is where all the activity was going on and I want you to keep your eyes open right here on the bed these two pictures were taken by Angel, and they were probably seconds apart from each other. The next picture, can you see the black shadow? It came up right here. So take a look right there, I'll, I'll toggle it back. Oh, sorry. See, not there, there. See the black? Mm. Those pictures were taken literally seconds apart. And uh, we feel like that was an entity coming up uh, that we had been talking to that was not a friendly entity. Um, but that's the only photographs we got of that entity at the time. Um, this is an interesting house. Y'all might know where that is. 
I don't know if I can share that, but I did. So anyway, <laughs> yes. cats out of bed or nothing. But anyway, um, of course you can't get into this house unless you know somebody uh, real special. But uh, we were not able to get in the house. But one of the things we do is we will poke our cameras in the windows and take pictures. And so if you've been to that house and want to know what it looked like on the inside, this is the inside front staircase going up to the second story of that house. Just thought I'd throw that in because some of y'all may know the location. Um, this one here is an interesting, um, and I don't think I'm getting bigger, but this was in a house right down here off South Church Street. They were having issues. The children would not sleep upstairs. And so the parents called and said, hey, look, the kids won't sleep upstairs. They haven't slept upstairs for months. They feel like there's something up there. We're hearing footsteps up there all, all night long. So we go up there, we're in the attic. We're actually in the attic looking back towards the door that you get go through to get in the attic. This is our thermal flare, and you will see right here, that little black thing there. Look at it right there. That was actually what we feel like was about a, a three or four foot tall figure, uh, probably a child. If you could see it up close, you'd see there's two eyes that are glowing uh, orange in the middle of that black. And, uh, so we prayed for them, we prayed for their home, and everything has been fine since. And that's what we like to hear. So um, just a couple more things, and then I will be... Um, uh, Sugaries. Y'all know where Sugaries is down here off the square. It's actually used to be a bookstore initially a long time ago, according to the from the mink to the main. Uh, it was a, a grocery store, I think. And uh, well, next to it used to be uh, help me, folks. Um, yes, uh, funeral home. Uh, scales. Funeral scales. Home. In fact, you'll find that interesting because um, this one here. I'll just let you hear it. Were you scared of your master? Oh. Wow. So one of the things we use is a flashlight. Um, the theory is you can manipulate the flashlight. It has to be a uh, mag light. And you twist it so that it's right on the verge of off and on. And when you lay it down, an entity can take their energy and turn that off and on to either make it light up or not light up and answer questions. And so in this case, it was answering the question. Uh, my wife was actually asking the question that time. I'll play it one more time for you. Were you Flashlight right here. Of your master. Oh. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you've heard the stories down there, the lady that owns it will tell you the stories. But there's always a card game going on in the back room, and um, literally. Make the flashlight light up if there's a game tonight. Thank you. See how quick the light light up? Um, and I know you have seen this happen with the flashlight. You, you've attested there's no wires, buttons, or anything else. It's a flashlight, know. folks. Um, <laughs> this is an interesting one you might find interesting. Yep. I'm going to ask you again if you'll answer me just to verify are you passing through from the funeral home? Don't be afraid to answer. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All was... after red. Um, this one here, right along the same line. There we go. Did you used to work at the funeral home? Okay. Again, all the power was out in the building. We turned all the air conditioners off, everything, so there's nothing <laughs> going on there. This one is... Uh... Can you tell me if you're a male? Are you a man? Okay. No. <laughs> Good, okay. You can turn it off now. Go ahead and turn it back off. We'll ask the next question. Isn't this a fun game? Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, one thing you'll notice, we don't get real excited, do we? You know, you will see this on TV and what happens? <gasps> they take deep, deep breaths and they almost fall over backwards when something happens. It's <laughs> not that way in real life. It's, it's, I refer to it, it's like being an ambulance driver. You're trained to do something, you pull up on a wreck, and you do what you've been trained to do. Most of us would throw up, but the people who have been trained to do that can do it. It's the same way for us. Uh, we, we've been doing this so long that 
nothing really affects us much. And we've been we've been locked in uh, Ruby Falls for four hours in the dark in the middle of the night with no electricity on down there, and we've gotten a free floating apparition on video that was confirmed by the sheriff's department through their computer software. So we've done a lot of different locations and had a lot of fun. So now I want to hear your stories. I know some of you had some you were telling me earlier, but tell me some stories that you've had from your homes or where you grew up. I want to ask you one question. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever been scared out of your... <laughs> yes, I have. The jeebers. Um, and I will tell you, it, had, it really had nothing to do with our investigation. We got a call from a gentleman down, um, I can't even remember the name War of that Trace. town. I'm sorry? War Trace. War Trace, thank you. And uh, he said he, he uh, had discovered that on his property he had some treasure, buried treasure, and was part of the Ku Klux Klan, the um, Golden Knights of the something something. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And apparently they went around and they buried treasure in five points of a star on a piece of property, and he had found one on his property. He had dug down 20, 30 feet down. He found the treasure box, but every time he tried to pull it up out of the ground, it would cave in and he couldn't get it. And now there were all these ghosts and things coming after his house, and they'd run off his family. And uh, at the time, we did not pre-qualify people before we went to their homes. Now we do. Uh, but. We got down there, and he was telling us about how his family, his, his wife and child, got scared and ran away. And uh, But there was no evidence of anything in the house regarding children or a wife at all. What was in the house when we got there was a loaded revolver, a um, big knife, a machete, and a baseball bat. And he wanted us to go up into his back pasture where he dug this hole so that we could try to get this box out for him. And it was one o'clock in the morning. And um, me being the quick thinker I am, and he knew that we'd just recently been on TV, I said, you know, this is a great story. I said, this is really TV stuff. Let me come back out on Saturday and bring my TV crew. And uh, he bought it after some convincing. And so we got out of there as quick as we could. Uh, he actually is a nurse at one of the hospitals in downtown Nashville. So if you're down there for anything, just be careful. <laughs> But this guy was weird. I mean, he was really, really weird, and we were scared to death of our physical safety. So now we get, we pre-qualify people before we go to their homes. We go visit them, we check it out, make sure it's legit. And uh, sometimes we carry the electric stun things with us if we just don't know. And uh, but yeah, that's. But from a investigation, no. It just we've had a lot of interesting things happen, but to be scared. Now. Right, what about you? What about you guys? Angel doesn't get scared. I don't get scared very easily. I mean, you know, she I very rarely gets scared about anything you ask to do. Angel is our brave person on our team. If, if anybody know where South Pittsburgh is, there's a hospital down there called the South Pittsburgh Hospital. Been been abandoned for years. She is the one that will go up and spend the night all by herself in the operating room on the third floor, which used to also be the psych ward. Hmm. And uh, none of the rest of our team will do that. So. <laughs> she slept in jail. I mean, this is actually old jail now. <laughs> She's actually slept in jail cells by herself. And, you know, so. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. What are the orbs? Yeah, interesting question. Everybody talks about orbs. Um, we are not big orb believers. Um, they do exist in lot. In fact, I have. I do want to show y'all a picture, but. Um, uh, Um, we believe that most orbs can be uh, denounced as either dust or bugs. And because when you take them and put them in a computer software program and you blow them up, dust every time is going to have a smiley face on it. And I know that sounds crazy, but a piece of dust, when you blow it up, it'll have two eyes and a mouth smiling <laughs> at you. <laughs> I've encountered orbs in my own home uh -huh. with security cameras. Mm -hmm. And uh, they vary in size. We're talking about this big to tiny to... A lot of that could be dirt or dust that's blown around. <laughs> and so you'd, you'd be surprised. We can go into a home that is, the lady says, I vacuum here every week. And we put, because we have night vision cameras that we set up, <coughs> and it looks like it's snowing. You know, and it's just dust in the air. Especially they if you're in there for They walking. responded to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, you, you may have some orbs. We're not big believers in them. 
but I have seen a few cases, you know, that we couldn't explain. So, yeah. Um, I want to show you this set series of pictures. We always take three pictures, or try to take two to three pictures, right behind each other. This was taken in what I call Cannibal Cemetery. Um, it is out behind, um, oh, there's a dance, uh, Barfield Dance Studio, okay? Back behind there, there's a house. We know the owner. In his front yard, there's a cemetery that we believe used to belong to the family that was in that, in that uh, house. This is my son, and first picture, okay, you'll see these were taken right behind each other. First picture, perfect clear night, nothing going on. Second picture, third picture. So what happened in picture number two that was so different? You tell me. Somebody was smoking. <laughs> Nobody was smoking. None of us smoking. Vaping. That's, that's the thing. We don't smoke, smoke drink, discuss, any of that kind of stuff. No. Um, we, one thing you watch for in the winter is your breath because it will show, it will look like this in the winter time. But we are trained to make sure you don't breathe when you're taking pictures. And uh, but he, it was interesting, before I took this picture, these the set of pictures, he turned to me and he said, Dad, I feel like something is over me. Would you take my picture? So I took three shots, and that one was in the right in the middle. I took a picture of historic rugby of a church, and there was a gray, ghostly-looking form right in front of it. Mm -hmm. and, but there wasn't. It was a nice, sunny day. Yeah. But sometimes the temperature would drop. You know, <coughs> you could point your, your thermal imagery in a you know, drop down to 30 degrees. Or more. Right. And when they take no plasma or something, it's in that area. Right. That's what the smoke maybe comes from. Could be. My wife didn't like rugby because she's very sensitive to stuff. <laughs> Have any of you seen the movie um, uh, Paper Clips? It's a movie about a, a, a school down in uh, Whitwell, Tennessee, that tried to teach their kids about the Holocaust. And so they got four million paper clips brought in from all over the world. Oh, yeah. And in that process, somebody found out what they were doing, and they had access to one of the rail cars that were used during the Holocaust. <laughs> they brought it over here. And that rail car sits in front of the school now. Mm -hmm. And we have been down there three times and spent the night in that rail car, or most of the night in the rail car. And you'd be amazing. We get clickety clacks of, of the train going down the tracks. We get uh, uh, soldiers making noise, dogs barking, and there are no other dogs out. We've gotten German uh, voices, all kinds of things down there. So, anyway, other questions? Have you ever had any money? say that they've had things go missing, mm -hmm. like, like articles will go missing and then maybe they'll show back up again? Or? Yeah, uh, things sometimes will move around within a house, uh, as what they tell us, and so uh, that's a pretty common, common thing that people will say, that they'll either move from one place to another or they'll just come up missing for a while and then all yeah. of a sudden come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So have you been to rugby and done any checking? Not ever been to rugby. <laughs> Um, I'll go down there. Yes, sir. Have you investigated any of the kind of the myths and legends and traditions of Rutherford County, like the Monkey Woman Bridge and the Chapel Hill Light and all that? Business? Well, I've not heard about the Monkey Woman, Woman Bridge. I'd like to hear about that. Well, I haven't gone down to the Chapel Hill Light and uh, did not see it. Uh, we tried to get into Oakland's. Um, we were supposed to get into Oakland's, and the day that we were supposed to go in, uh, there was a legal issue that didn't allow us to get in. So um, we didn't get in there, but uh, yes, sir. Uh, the Monkey Woman Bridge, uh, it's it's over here in Hannibal, and oh. that's, that, that's that metal bridge. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't even know what it was called, okay. And so what's the story about that? Toby, go for it. <laughs> Kelly, Toby. It was, uh, it was located out on Stewart Creek, that, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, on One Mile Lane, mm -hmm. so there were stories of, uh, you know, you go there and there'd be creatures hanging off the bridge and something like that. And, you know, scary creatures, but because uh, I, I never saw them myself, but I, I was sure. playing the story. Well, when we did the investigating at Cannesboro, we did get some audio of, of some things there that we couldn't explain that were answering questions and turning on the flashlights on command and things for us. So that would be interesting. I've never heard of that story. Yes, sir. Do you think about that, please? Yeah, uh, when we've done the, we've not actually been on the battlefield. Uh, we plan to go, but um, every time we've asked, we have to pay for a park ranger to go with us, and so we've not yet paid that fee because it's not really cheap. Um, but when we did the, the uh, Greenway down by the river, um, a couple of nights we went, we'd go 
during the battlefield battle time uh, at the end of December and uh, we've gotten cannons in the background going off and we've gotten some soldiers what sounds to be soldiers uh, just saying hello and different things like that but nothing real exciting other than some cannon sounds and some, some people saying hello are you familiar with the electric field of earth I am not can you educate me Yes, the Earth has about a constant 100 volt per meter. Okay. Now that's, that stays pretty constant. However, constant doesn't mean perfect. Mm -hmm. It does move around because it, it's just the nature of things. It's energy. It's very small amounts of energy that can be measured. Uh, it, it's important to understand it because lightning is the same way. You have Earth a cloud in, over the ground and that creates an electric field much larger than the Earth's magnetic mm -hmm. electric field. And, and you need to know the difference between those hmm. when you're uh, looking for thunderstorms and things like that. That's why you have all one of these things at the airports. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called a field mill and it measures the electric field. Okay. And, and when you get enough of that field, you have lightning. Okay. And that's, that's what it's So it can, it can yeah. manipulate some so, But it's, it, it could fool you about a many things because right. it's a variable. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's one thing we try not to rely on just one tool. Um, if we ask a question, we'll ask that question four or five times in different ways. Kind of like with your kids. You say, did you clean your room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is your room clean? Yeah. You know, you'll ask them two or three different ways to see if you get the same answer every time. Yes, sir. It's a place of needle, and it's a circle, and it's called ley lines, what they're talking about, where lines cross, and you know, you can walk across and your consoles will spin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went there, it's a place of needle. And uh, it is that, when you actually read it, you can actually read it in the air. Mm -hmm. You know, if the temperature will rise, mm -hmm. you know, or go up lower, you'll have static electricity come up, you touch somebody's hair, and it's, oh, it's kind of strange. <laughs> Real strange. <laughs> it's unreadable. It's a place. Okay. Anything else? Did you ever go into the old Louisa Developmental Center after it was vacated? I it's where Bell Street Center is now, across the street from Evergreen Cemetery. I have not known. Okay. Well, John, so several things happened at Louisa Center, including was it 1987? <laughs> there was a homicide in there. That, uh, hmm. but that's all gone now. Well, one thing, we, we are very um, proper, I guess. We will never go anywhere unless somebody asks us or gives us permission. Um, so a lot of people in this field will just show up. Uh, we've had people come on our website and just downgrade us for not going somewhere where we couldn't get permission. And it's like, okay, so you want us to break the law to do this, and we're not going to do that. So uh, we, we try to find out who owns a piece of property, and then we try to get access to that. Or they'll call us, and we get a lot of calls for our website and Facebook page. Yes? Have you ever been in a house cleansing? Um, well, That's another question. Yeah. Have you ever been around an exorcism, and there's, is there people around here yeah. that can perform it? Two good questions. Um, as I said earlier, uh, when we cleanse a house, we tend to rely on the people's faith that they have in, in Christ and we redirect them that way to cleanse their, their home. We can't do that for them. Um, as far as the other thing is concerned, uh, we run into just a couple instances where it was something that we did not want to deal with. We just didn't feel comfortable enough with that. <coughs> we do have a group of, of three clergy that are in the area, uh, one actually as far away as Memphis, that uh, deal with, with that, and uh, we can give people their name and refer them to those people. So we try not to leave them empty handed. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Yes, sir. Have you or your team members ever gone through a cemetery, say at night, just to get a feeling? <laughs> well, we like to do that. We're kind of weird like that. Um, one of the cemeteries that we went to early on in, our, in my uh, career, doing this, I wouldn't really call it a career, but um, we used to go up to Nashville to the, what's the big cemetery up in Nashville? Oh. Mount Oliver. <laughs> we'd go up and we'd be there at midnight and stay till 3.30 in the morning. And all we would do is walk through the cemetery. And uh, I'll tell you what, if, even if nothing's going on up there, it's a creepy place at that time of night. And uh, since then, they, 
we have found out that they don't allow people in there and they don't lock it but if they find you there they will call the police so we just don't go up there anymore but yeah um, we actually have a cemetery by our home that has what five or six places in it that we know of um, we've been trying to figure out more about it and who it might belong to so if anybody here is a cemetery guy that loves that kind of stuff uh, come come talk to me because we'd love to have you come out and check it out <laughs> so thanks john thank you oh one other slide i'm sorry i have a i have an advertisement <laughs> um, the advertisement is we don't charge anything to do investigations but we do have expenses and so what we do uh, all of our team buys our own equipment but we have ghost hunting 101 events and uh, what this is is this for the for the people that have watched on TV and they just want to go and see what happens okay so we go and we find a place we spend the night there we start at 7 p.m. and usually stay until three or five or six or seven however long we can stay and so if you're interested in two weeks we're going to be at Hales Barn Dam two nights Friday night and Saturday night all night and um, where is that? I'm sorry Hales where Barn Dam it's on Lake Nickajack between here and Chattanooga the dam was closed in 1969 by the uh, TVA <laughs> and uh, it's a really cool location underground it's got seven miles of underground tunnels Okay? Nobody even knows they're there. 